Okay, so now I want to show you how to analyze a clip. So you know that when uh, a clip has a green bar on it, that means it's been marked as your favorite. And then if you want to undo that, you click the U key. Or put it back, you click the F key. Then if you want to mark it as rejected, you hit the delete key and a red bar shows up. Then over here we have a, a blue bar. That means that it's got keywords on it. All right, there's also a purple bar that will show up sometimes. That means that the clip has been analyzed. So these two have been analyzed. And when, when you analyze it, you can analyze it for different things. So let me take one that has not been analyzed, such as this one, and analyze it. So to do that, you go up to Modify and Analyze and Fix. Then this window pops up. Now you can tell it to analyze for color balance if you want, or analyze to fix audio problems. Um, what we're going to do on this one is just do find people and we are going to deselect where it says consolidate find people results because I don't know what you even use that for. Alright so find people um, means that it'll, it'll tell you how many people are in the shot and um, then it'll create a smart collection afterwards. So that's why we have that selected so I'm going to go ahead and do that and now we can see that there's a purple bar here and when we hover over it we have we can now see that it says that it's a medium shot and it has one person okay so why would you want to use that well now it has created a smart collection over here and we can then organize it by medium shot so when we click medium shot several different things come up when we click shots with one person several different ones come up two persons so that's one of the advantages. Now, one of the other things that we can do, go back to this view, and I want to see all my clips, is when we analyze, we can choose other options. So we can say fix audio problems. Generally, I don't do that here. I have it set up so that when I'm in the import window, click here, and right down here it says analyze and fix audio problems, separate mono and, and group stereo, remove silent channels. I would recommend you set up your your import window to look like that so that it is, it is doing all of that ahead of time. Now up here you can also go ahead and tell it to analyze the video for balance of color and you can also tell it to go ahead and find people. The problem with that is it takes a while and so I would not do that because there's a lot of shots you're not going to use anyway so don't do it here. Just do the audio. That's pretty quick. And then it's already setting up those things for you so that when you have the shot that you want to uh, do something with, then it's already been analyzed. But one thing that you can do is tell it to go ahead and analyze color, but that, that will take a little bit longer. So if we say analyze and fix for color balance, all right, now that one didn't take too long, so it's already done. You can see right here it's already done. Uh, but sometimes it'll take a while. Um, okay, so once you have the analysis done, Let's go to one that has some audio. So let's go to this one. Let's 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 analyze that one first. All right. So we're gonna analyze the audio for that. Should have been done when it when it was imported. It probably was, but we're gonna just go ahead and go through the process anyway. All right. So now I want to analyze for audio problems. All right. And then now when I bring that down to the timeline. Click on audio right here. So you can see here it, it analyzed it and then it fixed something. So we can hit show. All right, and now it's showing that it, it boosted the loudness a bit and it also did some noise removal. So let me just take that shot down here so we can listen to it. And you can hear the difference when I. You can hear the difference when I turn on the noise removal and then turn it turn it on and back off. You can hear the difference. And when I turn the loudness on and off, you can hear a difference. Personally, I like it better with the loudness turned off. So you can deselect that if it is 
fixed it for you or it claims that it's fixing it but it really doesn't make it better you can turn it off okay so that's that's one thing that you'll analyze so once you've done the analysis the that becomes part of the metadata so if we go over to the browser window and go to list view scroll down we see that some of these have an arrow beside them and when you click the arrow it shows you the results of the analysis so that means that if you're trying to find these in particular you can do a search and find them that way as well so you're not always having to use the the uh, smart collection that's been created you can uh, go to the search function right here as well all right another thing or two other things that Final Cut will analyze is it will analyze for stability of the shot and it will analyze for what's called a rolling shutter all right so let's take a look at the uh, ability to stabilize it first of all that's done here in the inspector it used to be possible to do it up here with analyze and fix but that's not an option up there anymore and now it's over here now the thing about analyzing for stability is that it takes a few minutes all right so I'm going to um, have it analyze both of these so I'm going to click stabilization and so now you see that it's analyzing for dominant motion and if we click up here we can see that it's going to take a couple minutes probably okay so it took about a minute probably all right so I got I have two different shots here of essentially the same thing but I, I shot them two different ways on one of them I tried to um, to actually make it as shaky as possible. So let's take a look at that one. So I was actually kind of bouncing up and down. All right, and you see that it doesn't work so well. All right, now on this other one, this is how it looks because I was trying to be as stable as possible, but it was still a little bit shaky because I'm hand holding it. Both of these were shot with my cell phone. Right there, it's a little bit of a problem because it's too much of a jolt. You can tell it's been stabilized. But from this point forward, it works out pretty well. And this is really only, this is the only way to really use the stabilize function. And even there, you can see it's still a little bit too shaky. But it's basically, it's not, it, it doesn't work that well on a shot where there's a lots of movement. It's basically a shot where you're trying to, to keep it stable. So for instance, let's say you just had a, sh a shot of somebody talking and you, and you were holding the camera with your hand and it was a little bit shaky, it, it could stabilize that pretty well. Once you start moving around, it's a lot harder to make it look good. Now there are some options here. So if you go over to here, it's on automatic right now. Well, you can also switch it to either inertia cam or smooth cam. And each of those gives a different look. So here we are with, with inertia cam. And I can actually adjust the amount of smoothing going on. Now let's switch it over to Smooth Cam. With smooth Cam, I actually get more options. I can, I can take the rotation smoothness all the way down if I want. And maybe change the scale smoothness a little bit. And let's see what happens now. You can still tell that it's been smooth cammed. So um, it would probably take a little bit more playing with it to get it to work. But there again, it's, it's also not really designed for that kind of a shot. It's designed for a shot where you're standing there, hand holding the camera, and you, you get some a little bit of movement in there, but you don't want it to look that, that way. You actually want it to look like it's on a tripod. That's really what it's good for. So don't go out and shoot a scene thinking, oh, I'll just do all this handheld and I'll smooth cam it later and it'll be fine. It won't be if you're running around with the camera and stuff. If you're, if you're holding it stable though, you can get a pretty good look with it. Now, the other thing I mentioned that it will analyze for is rolling shutter. I don't have an example of that one right now. But rolling shutter is basically when you have a shot with straight lines in it like this. And because of the, the movement of the camera, they no longer are straight anymore. They, they're kind of leaning over to the side. 
and that's caused by this problem called rolling shutter. So when you have it analyzed for rolling shutter, it will then um, adjust and try and correct for that problem as well. And then under rolling shutter, you've also got some options here about how much you want it to, to do it because there again, just like with the stabilization, it doesn't always look as realistic as you would like for it to. All right, but, but those are the different ways of analyzing the video and fixing problems before you try to start fixing them manually yourself.